Um, what I wanted to go over, I apologize, you guys. I hit the thing to get out. But anyways, God be glorified. Um, so this morning, I do apologize because I, hi, Michael, we were talking about fasting and um, <laughs> some of the benefits because we're going through this fast with the, the church and everything or with new, with the uh, prayer nation of prayer with new beginning ministry. And so, um, I actually, um, didn't know what to teach until like 10, 15 minutes. I was like, God, I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed with stuff. So I was like, I don't know what to teach. And then he put this book back into my remembrance because I was going to, I was going over, um, Reverend Paulette gave us scriptures through this fast. And, um, so I printed that out and I will probably go through that. But I remember this one book called fasting by Jensen Franklin and opening, opening the doors to a deeper and more intimacy with more powerful relationship with God. And, and we all know this, that, um, and that when we do fast, we're dying to our flesh, um, you know, and that our spirit man is being strengthened. The flesh is being destroyed and the spirit man is increasing. And that's able to help us to um, commune with God better, especially in speaking tongues, worshiping and worshiping in the spirit and truth. So there spiritually, there is a lot of benefits um, of fasting. And so I wanted to just go through some of what he said that I thought was very important. Um, and uh, we do know that there's a lot of people that just don't even fast. There's a lot of people that really don't even worship. They may go to church and that's about it and get some, you know, words there, but they are not really pushing into Jesus. Um, we're people that do push in and we're people that uh, want to know um, God more and more. And we, and we push ourselves. Um, let's see. Uh, let's um, just talk about, I'm going to read a little bit, bit out of his book, um, Fasting, Opening the Doors to a Deeper, More Intimate, and More Powerful Relationship with God. Jensen Franklin, he says, uh, let's go Psalm 42, 1 and 3, as the, deeper, as the deer pant for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you oh god my soul thirsts for god for the living god when shall i come and appear before god my tears have been my food day and night well they continually say to me where is your god you just see here how david is just that's all he wants is god he wants more of god he's struggling he's got to battle the thoughts you know or whatever he's going through and just push and just saying but i want more of you so my pants my soul for you oh god my soul thirsts for you for the living god when shall i come and appear before god you know he just that's all he wants you see it in this psalm and um, that he he, um, his, my tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me, where is your God? And he just, he, that's it. He's just like a dog with a bone. He's just going to latch on to God and pursue God and seek him and search him day and night. And his, like he said, his food is his tears, you know, um, day and night, just going after God. So, you know, you're in this state of just, it's just you and God. You're in this state of it's me and you, God. And I'm going to worship you, go after you, and, um, and see where you're going to lead me, you know. Um, fasting for your breakthrough. Uh, when, what is fasting? I'm going to read a little book out of this book. What is fasting since there are so many misconceptions about it? I first wanted to clarify what fasting, bib biblical fasting is not. Fasting is not merely going without food for a period of time. That is dieting, maybe even starving, but fasting is not, nor is fasting something done only by um, fanatics. I really want to drive the point home. Fasting is not to be done only by religious monks. Uh, um, 
along with a crave somewhere. The practice of fasting is not limited to ministers or special occasions. We all should be fasting. Um, Jesus does talk to us about that in the Bible, you know. Um, so let's see. Um, I wouldn't want to deal with this. It talks about uh, when, when you eliminate food from your diet for a number of days, your spirit becomes uncluttered by the things of this world and amazingly sensitive to the things of God. As David stated, deep calls unto deep, Psalm 42, 7. David was fasting. His hunger and his thirst for God were, were greater than his natural desires for God. As a result, he reached a place where he could cry out from the depths of his spirit to depths of God, even in the midst of his trial. Once you've experienced even a glimpse of that kind of intimacy with our God, our Father, the Holy Creator of the universe, and the countless rewards and blessings that follow, your whole perspective will change. You will soon realize that fasting is a secret source of power that is overlooked by many. Um, <clears throat> a three, so really, there's there is this i don't know if you've experienced this in fasting you just really are de denying that flesh that uncluttered is going away and it's really you and god and there's a, there's a power behind it um what i thought was very interesting a three three four chords is not quickly broken and i like what uh, jeff um jetson said mr franklin here out of his book um during the year that jesus walked the earth he devoted time to teach his disciples um the principle of the kingdom of god so he was teaching the kingdom of god principles that conflicted with those of this world in the beatitudes specifically in matthew 6 jesus provided the pattern by which each of us is to live as a child of God. The pattern addressed three specific duties of a Christian, giving, praying, and fasting. Jesus said, when you give and when you pray and when you fast, he made it clear that fasting is like giving and praying um, was a normal part of Christian life. As much attended should be given, fasting, and as giving to give to prayer. So there's three things going on here. There's uh, your giving, praying, and fasting. So that's our three chord strand. Those three things together are powerful. Solomon, when writing the book of wisdom for Israel, made the point that a cord of rope um, braided with three strands is not easily broken. Likewise, when giving, praying, and fasting are practiced together, in the life of a believer, it has created a type of three, four cord that is not easily broken. In fact, as I'll show you in a moment, Jesus took it even further by saying nothing will be impossible. <clears throat> you know, think about that. So if you're doing God's will, giving, praying and fasting, nothing will be impossible. Um so this is this is important, you know, as disciples that we are we're doing all three, not just one, which could be dieting. Not just praying, but also giving is very um, important. Um, could we actually be missing our breakthroughs um, by not doing all these three things? Remember, 30, um, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold return Jesus spoke of in Mark. Um, four and eight. Look at it this way. When you pray, you can release the 30 fold return when both prayer and giving are part of your life. I believe the release, the 60 fold blessing, when all three giving, praying and fasting are released in your life, that hundred fold um, return can be released. And that to me, when I was going through this book, I found that very fascinating that you know had doing you know all three you know um that that could push you into a hundredfold
Um, if that's the case, you have to wonder what blessings are not being released. You know, are we hindering ourselves by not really doing all three and just, you know, doing, you know, oh, I'll just pray and, or, you know, fast later, um, give later, not really be giving, you know, how are we hindering ourselves to not come into that hundredfold? Um, Matthew does tell the story of a father who had a demon possessed son for years. He watched helplessly as his son suffered with um, severe convulsions. As he grew older, the attacks became so severe that the boy would often throw himself into a an open fire or a trench of water, a suicide spirit tormented him constantly. The situation became life threatening. Having exhausted all every attempt to cure the body, the boy, even taking him to the to the disciples with no avail, the father's plight seemed impossible. That he he heard that Jesus was near. Going to the master, he cried, uh, "Lord, have mercy on my son." for he is a lunatic and sore vexed for often he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. When the boy was, and that was Matthew 17, 15 and on to 18. And when the boy was brought to Jesus, the Bible says he rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. But what made the difference here, as we all know, um, in Matthew 10, it was recorded that Jesus had already given the disciples power to cast out evil spirits and to heal the evil diseases. So why couldn't the disciples cast out this demon and cure the boy? That's what they wanted to know, too. So later that night, when they were alone with Jesus, they asked him, Jesus replied, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief, they, they asked him. And Jesus replied, because of your unbelief, for verily I say to you, if you, if ye have faith as um, grain of his mustard seed, ye shall say unto the mountain, remove hence to your place. And it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How about this kind um, goes not out by prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. So I don't know if anybody has any comments at this time for what we've gone over so far. You know. Um, no, no. No. Okay. So anyways, um, you know, think about it. Nothing, nothing is actually impossible. Nothing is actually impossible. And, um, but this kind only comes out with prayer and fasting. So we really do need to keep ourselves sharp and on guard and to be fasting. So, you know, that we're in that hundredfold place and um, we can move in that power. And I think a lot of us missed, missed stuff because we have, we're not fasting. Um, so, so, when, so we need to be more faithful in fasting, prayer and giving. But fasting is uh, a lot of people don't really do much fasting. I, I was talking to um, a friend of mine and she's like, oh, I can't fast because I have I have to eat every two to three hours because of my stomach and this and that. And, you know, I have this stomach issue or that. And I'm like, there's a lot more to her story. But, you know, um, you know, and you can fast other things. But I think it's important because a lot of us really love food and it really should be dealt with food. Um, I'm going to give some scriptures here. Um, how fasting is really for everyone. Um, in Luke 5 34, can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But when the day will come, when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. Okay, so, you know, at the time, they didn't really have to fast because Jesus was with them. So you get this impression that, you know, when we fast, that's when we commune with Jesus. When we're fasting and praying and um, worshiping, we're really with Jesus. 
you know and um so they because jesus was with them they really didn't have to fast at that time um and then afterwards when jesus leaves they need they need to fast when the bridegroom's not there um let's see so but jesus did fast as we know um when he was being right he did 40 day fast right before his ministry so you know it was as if he was fasting for everybody at that time because you know that you know we are in christ and that maybe is why they didn't have to fast for them or you know why he was with them um but that's just a theory um let's see peter first peter 2 21 a disciple is not above his teacher but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher Okay, there's another viewpoint that I wanted um, want you to see in um, Matthew 6. Okay, that was um, uh, with going back to Luke, you know, um, Jesus did fast, so we should be doing fasting. Um, there's another viewpoint here that I want you to see in Matthew 6. God delights in giving rewards. Not only that, but he says, that when giving, praying, and fasting are practical in your life, he rewards you openly. He rewards you openly. A good example of such open rewards can be found in Daniel. While in Babylon, captivity, his fasting, even partial fast of certain foods brought about an open reward of God who blessed Daniel with wisdom beyond that of anyone else in his empire. Uh, later in chapter 10, Daniel was grieved and burdened with the revelation he had received for Israel. He ate no, um, he ate no choice bread or meat and drink, nor, way, nor wine for three weeks. Then he described the angels that was sent to him, which had been delayed by the prince of Persia for 21 days with the answer Daniel sought his fast break the power of the delayer and release the angels of God so that God's purpose could be revealed and served. This is just the tip of the iceberg. As you read on, I will show you how the three, four chord works in every area of your life. Um, do you, do we desire, do we desire to know God for your life, for our life, whom should be Mary um, and what we should do in the um, critical situation. Um, so it's important to really understand, what time is it? Uh, that uh, it also brings health to your body, finance, to, um, prosperity and blessings, okay? So when we do this fast, it, it will bring blessings, financial prosperity, also in good health and healing to our bodies. And it will help us to grow, draw closer to God and have breakthroughs in our life. And nothing shall be impossible for us. So fasting is truly a secret source of power. Um, anybody wanted to add on um, anything else about fasting? Uh, I want to just, you said fasting is a, is a source of power. And I wanted to say that sometimes even though fasting is not to be a diet, fasting makes you makes your body feel more um, like you feel better in order to do things better. Mm -hmm. So like you're you're not heavy because of McDonald's or Fufu or whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> you feel you feel light enough to do things, even mm -hmm. though when you know we we have a headache because we are tired, but. Mm -hmm. For most of the day, you feel light enough to do more things. You feel like, mm -hmm. okay, I don't know, but I have the strength to do things today. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, so fasting more than being a spiritual activity is an activity that is like mm -hmm. giving. Strangely, even though you know you're not eating for most of the time, you have more strength and energy to do things. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's true. It is true. Um, any other? points of view here.
um I find an experience is fascinating. It makes you like more awake, like more alert in the spirit, more sensitive yeah. to the Holy Spirit. And um, you know, you just God like take you in a different realm. And and I find, you know, people that I have, I mean, I yet to get there, but I found that people that does a lot of or used to do a lot of fasting, they walk in such a humility. Like there's a depth in them. There is a quietness in their spirit because, um, you know, they're seeing things, they're perceiving things. And mm -hmm. um, it's like something transfer onto you when you're in their presence that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the natural world cannot really um, express. Also, I read in a book many, many years ago when I started fasting, um, it good, it like toxin, it's really like a spring clean to your body. We need a yeah, spring clean. Yeah, there's a great health benefit yes. in fasting. Yes. yes, and there was one time where this person described that this lady had a huge tumor in her stomach and the doctors had all opinions and everything to deal with this and this sister, God put her on a fast and at the end of that 21 days fast she passed that huge like a grapefruit in her belly and wow. it came out through the toilet yeah that's what she got mm -hmm. of fasting mm -hmm. so fasting has already a lot of benefits yeah mm -hmm. wow it does there there is um you know fasting slows your aging process that is one of the benefits fasting will actually uh that um, slow your aging process. Moses fasted often, including two 40 day fasts. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy 34, verse seven, Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his nature vigor, vigor diminish. Um, Dr. Tanya, these are just uh, stuff out of the same book that talks about um, the health benefits. Dr. Tanner passed on some advice this was a doctor that did research some advice from his own experience um stating when you fast drink plenty of water water is the great flushing agent in fasting so um one of the signs that these to there's toxins what um was uh, talking about here is it really gets rid of a lot of your toxins in your body um and there's a book called um Tox, toxic relief and it's um actually about you know fasting just you know um for health benefits and dr cobalt dr cobalt bert um he has a research study that body needs to rid itself of toxins that cause illness disease fatigue and many other ailments um because we do not attempt to cover every medical aspect benefits of fasting in this book um, we do recommend, they do recommend this book. And so it does help cleanse and talk, detox your body. Um, um, here's another, Dr. Oda Birchinger, who supervised more than 70,000 fasts, state fasting is a royal road to healing for anyone who agrees to take it for recovery and regeneration of the body, mind, and spirit. He went on to say fasting can heal and help rheumatoid, rheumatoidism and joints and muscle diseases, heart circulation, blood vessels, stress, uh, stress related exhaustion, skin disease, including temp, um, pimples and complexion, um, menstrual cycles, hot flashes, respiratory or, organs, um, and allergies too. There's all these health benefits that, um, happen like uh, minister osha said um anybody else wanted to add <clears throat> with that it's michael <clears throat> good morning yeah. um, you know i i've come to find that i'm almost always it sounds maybe unbelievable but I'm almost always fasting <laughs> hardly ever eating it's like and i am a bit thin but I feel good in it. I feel like food is almost a distraction. I mean, that sounds extreme. Mm -hmm. There's also unhealthy uh, attitudes you can have about eating. You know, we don't want that either. Mm -hmm. But I find that like, I'm not hungry. I can eat so little and have so much strength. And um, 
just strength to do what I need to do physically, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, and, and have clarity and quietness in my soul. You know, it's amazing how little I eat. Maybe I eat a, uh, a little uh, drink in the morning with a muffin and then I'm good, you know, just with some nuts and raisins and more Ooh, lots of water during the day, during the whole day. And I'm doing heavy work too. And, and so, but the thing is, it's helping my focus to God uh, and, and just uh, be staying attuned in the spirit, I believe. Mm-hmm. I don't know that it's always considered fasting or, 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 or uh, fruitful as a fast that's focused with a, a, a goal. Uh, I, I don't know. I could say that about my walk. Uh, as much as I'd like to, to have it be, um, but I I think it has all those those uh, benefits that you're describing. Definitely those health benefits. It's like I find that eating is almost like um, a distraction <laughs> sometimes. You know, yeah. but, but that, just let me describe this. Eating um, is very affected, like by the psyche. Like I'm hungry. I get real appetite when I'm around the saints or you know there's it's like there's the bridegroom somehow in the fellowship Mm -hmm. he's present now you know and um and i can see that it's it's often you know for good or for bad you know sometimes Mm -hmm. i'll i'll have a craving that that would otherwise not be there or a lack of maybe uh (laughs) self-control to quiet it because of something that's up you know in the group or something you know something that makes me nervous or or uh you know needing peace or quietness and so it is very psychological when and what we choose to eat you know right. uh, many times and and uh it's a it's a way of fasting from the world too with the food and and so of course there's many other things we can fast from but uh, that's my input right now <laughs> So appreciate your input. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. That's, that's, you're right about everything you said, but yeah. And, and I, I agree sometimes, you know, when you're going through stuff and you're fast and you're pushing in, you know, sometimes I guess we can go overboard, but that's, um, yeah, I don't, but on the other hand, I don't know if you can really go overboard, but you know, I guess some people do. Um, but really keeping the three chord strand together is important with the prayer and the fasting, you know, um, and the giving. Amen. 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 I want to share uh, a little yes. bit about fasting and I want to share particularly about two fasts that um, uh, impress me that the Lord asked me to do. And if I'm talking too long for the first one, remind me the second one so I stop talking. Okay. So <laughs> the first one he told me because we are used with the regular fast of uh, avoiding one meal or six to six or three days dry is I remember I was in uh, Ashland and I have so many people with me and people were kind of uh, pressing me like uh, left and right, pray for me, explain me this mm-hmm. dream, interpret for me this, and th- I was overwhelmed. And I have children. My children were still young. Mm-hmm. I was so, I didn't have time to really focus mm-hmm. on God. And then the Lord told me, I want you to fast with your word. Fast with your word. I didn't mm-hmm. know that it exists. I said, what is that, Lord? He said, I want you to talk don't don't if you can avoid to talk avoid to talk you wow. just tell people uh, you are fasting and your fast is not talking so i will wow. be uh, I, will, I, I, I will take care of my children okay i take uh, give them shower and everything prepare them and everything but i told people i cannot talk that much because the lord told me to stay quiet and I saw that during that time where I was quiet, I gained so much insight in the spirit because mm-hmm. my spirit was quiet and I was, I, I was receiving directly from him. And I saw that talking actually too much is a distraction. 
And in the, in the abundance of words, there's sin. I think it's somewhere in the Bible. Yes, Proverbs. So, yeah. yeah. So if we spend the time just talking on the phone or talking or chatting on everything, actually, we don't have that time to hear from God because we are busy listening to other voice. So that was mm -hmm. the first that, that really uh, touched me. And even if we do the regular fast with food, we need to think that we need that time of meditation where we mm -hmm. quiet our spirit and we can receive. It's very important. Amen. The time to receive, that silence inside you just to receive, not the TV, not someone else or YouTube teaching of someone else. Yeah. The second fast, I, I remember that Mark me that he and those are fast. He give him, he's giving me directly direction. It's not that mm -hmm. I read somewhere. He will come and say, I want you to fast this way. The second one was he asked me to eat the bread without leaven, without yeast, you know. Mm -hmm. And I chose to eat, you know, that uh, the Jewish bread, the, yeah, the matzo or something matzah, like that. Matzah. Yeah, matzah. Yeah, matzah. So I chose to eat that one. Caroline, do you know that I find that fast more difficult than the regular dry one? Wow. That fast was so hard for me. I don't know. I was just eating the matzo and uh, drinking and I, I will eat anytime I'm hungry. He, I think he put me on that for like, it was like five days or something like that. Just mm -hmm. eating the matzo and uh, drinking uh, the fruit, uh, like um, grapefruit. A little bit like you are doing communion yeah. constantly, you understand, for yeah. five days. It was so hard. My flesh was crying. And I understood that it has a spiritual meaning that, okay, I couldn't understand all of it. And I, I, I look at Maza, I learn about Maza, how the body of Christ was peace and everything. You know, the whole on Maza is a meaning, has, has a meaning. I, I did the whole teaching on, on the bread. Wow. But I think it killed so many things inside me that the dry fast was not able to do. So that is amazing because I think the dry fast is like the ultimate power. Sword. No, just, no, yeah, no, I don't know what happened with that. Perhaps it's because it's like an action of communion, but it's continual mm -hmm. for five days. I did not eat anything else but manza and grape, the, the grape. So I was always, that it was like self deliverance, but it was under his instruction. I don't tell people just go and do it. No, it was him who wanted me to do it just in order to achieve something in me so it's mm -hmm. what i want to share mm -hmm. oh that is really awesome i remember the first time i fasted i was working at holy cross hospital and uh this book that i just read a little bit out of um and i was religious you know i went to church of christ it's like repent be baptized they got that right but if they would like really focus on sin and how you need to repent and be perfect. So I always had these dreams of walking a tightrope. And that's the way I really felt like I was living. And the guy said, you need to be fasting. He gave me this book. So I did, I think, a three-day fast. It might have only been a one-day fast. I can't even remember. It was the first time I kind of really ever fasted. And that night, I dreamt God riding in the star. He wrote or in the heavens. It was like a cloud riding. And it says, you will reap what you sow. And, oh God, what was the other two? I really forget the other two. He gave me three things. I probably have in a note somewhere, but I, the hand of God wrote three things up in the sky for me. And um, that's the only one that I remember is, you know, you'll reap what you sow. And so um, there's been other times where I fasted and had supernatural encounters. So I don't know if other people had supernatural encounters after breaking their fast. Are you asking a question? I'm asking, I asked a question if anybody has, you know, what happened after they got off the fast? You know, I, I think most of most of it is is an um, for me, it was an increase of authority. Amen. An increase of authority in the in spiritual realm. I was yeah. able to do some uh, deliverance I was not able to do before. 
So, and, but my training also was part of it because I was trained into fasting dry for continually uh, every, from Thursday to Sunday, Thursday to Sunday. Yeah, continually. And I knew that when I was fasting like that, just when I was talking to people, they will start manifesting. I'm not even praying. I will enter into McDonald's. People start manifesting around me. I enter in the train. Some mm. people, yeah, start, uh, uh, you know, those bad smell of uh, uh, some people like uh, rotten eggs. Yeah. People will, yeah, the demon will start leaving. As, but those were the result of dry fast. That was dry from Thursday to Sunday. That means no was, water. <laughs> no, no water. water. No water, no, no food. No food. Yes. He was able also to give me a kind of control because, you know, self-control is in uh, delegation of authority. Mm. If you are someone who has who is easily angry or easily uh, flip, mm. the law cannot give you authority. You will kill everybody. Mm. So he, you need to master self-control in such a way that even if the enemy is displaying, when the law say hold, hold in and stay quiet, you have to be able to stay quiet. So Amen. I think those ability come with fasting, how to control your spirit, mm -hmm. how to not be agitated by the work of the enemy and go when God is asking you to go. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's, if we can call it supernatural, I think that is fasting is a very good uh, teacher. Amen. Amen. Wow. Anybody wanted to add anything else? Yeah. Um, I find that, um, especially when I used to live at a camp in Virginia, that I did a lot of fasting there and a lot of praying. And when I would um, like minister to people, it's like I would get a word right away, right away. You know, it was mm -hmm. so sharp and everything. I mean, I do get now. But then I find also that when I used to lay hands on them, like mostly on their shoulders or hand or whatever, I would actually feel the anointing leave my fingers and go into that person. Mm -hmm. I actually I would that. feel it. Yeah, I would feel that. And then later they would come and tell me, you know, uh, they felt something like a light was released in them or something that like brought life back to them or deliverance or, you know, those kind of um manifestation of God does by his spirit and I used to be really so encouraged to press in and to do to press in a little more so yeah and yeah and that and reminds me hmm, yeah go ahead. that reminds me I um, did a 10-day fast I was in Ohio um and I was separated with my husband and um but but not for long I think it was like two weeks tops but I fasted for 10 days and I remember um, toward the end of the fast, I don't know if I completed the fast or I, or I was toward the end. And this lady barely, I mean, she was like in her eighties, she was overweight and could barely walk. And I said, oh, can I pray for your healing? She says, oh yes. And I went and prayed for her and um, she, and we exchanged phone numbers and everything. And she called me, I think two weeks later. And she goes, you know, I was waiting to make sure I was really healed. Um, but I got healed. She was healed right away of her pain and, and body aches and all that. And then she didn't want to call me until she really be believed and made sure she was healed. But she called me two, two weeks later to say, you know, I still feel good. Um, I told everybody in my church and my daughter and every, and everything. And, and I think you know, that's because that, that 10 day fast that I was on and then I prayed for other people too, but I can't remember. This was so long ago, um, of the manifestations that happened there too. Um, but how powerful that is, you know, this elderly lady, you know, was, was healed of all these chronic inflammated, um, diseases, you know, and uh, she could barely walk. And so she was healed. And it, and it takes that discipline, I think, you know, really being disciplined, disciple, the word disciple comes from discipline and really being disciplined. Um, so 
there's definitely a lot of benefits. I would encourage people to read um, this book if they can, Fasting with uh, Jensen Franklin, because there is so many benefits. <clears throat> and plus, you've heard other testimonies here. I wanted to go through also in uh, the, here were some of the scriptures that we were giving, that were given out um, for our fast. Um, yo, you know what? Yes, Michael, thank you. He wrote in the, the chat, increase of peace, focus, clarity, yielding increase of peace and authority. Yes. Um, you know, if I could just add. Um, please. When, when I first came back to the States from Israel uh, about 20 years ago, I, I was pretty quickly, I was in the camp and um, I was so set like uh before the lord like focusing and and i fasted for like nearly 40 days i i, I kind of did but I, I i say it like this i ate seven times probably seven meals in those 40 days and drank lots of fluids <laughs> you know yeah. and, and, um but it was like i didn't even need the food i was just doing it out of like i said when you're in the fellowship sometimes it's like a celebration of the bridegroom's presence. There's just, it's just a, the Lord is so present in fellowship. Mm. And um, um, those 40 days, it was really hard. It was hard at times. Uh, and I, I was alone a lot. Like I, I just went off in the room, you know, and, and um, it was hard for me. But, but um, and I can't say during that time that I got a lot out of it, but there there was a foundational scripture even psalm 42 actually i think it was yeah oh no it's another one but anyways um it that's like a foundational thing came out of it for a heart attitude in the walk like the mm -hmm. process of the walk that's basically the fruit there was a lot of self control that came out of it and and just that kind of mysteriously stayed with me you know not fruit that i could report oh this happened that happened this miracle you know mm -hmm. nothing manifest but just a presence i could say and uh self-control that that it gave me toward food you know and toward toward mm -hmm. a few other things, i suppose so thank you <laughs> amen amen <clears throat> that's amazing you know, I know it's funny because when you do fasting, you're used to not eating. You're like, wow. And then you eat your first meal. It's like, this is way too much. And I think we, as, as especially in America, we eat way too much food. Um, so I wanted to uh, look over some of these um, scriptures that uh, we are supposed to. Um, Galatians 2. I don't know if anybody would like to read Galatians 2, 20, 21. That's in the chat. you say galatians yeah it's in the chat did i say galatians galatians 2 verse 20 to 30 written in the word of god i have been crucified with christ and i no longer live but christ lives in me the life the sorry the life in i, I take it back sorry i have been crucified with christ and i no longer live but christ lives in me the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Verse 21, I do not set aside the grace of God, for I write, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Amen. 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 So um, if I've been crucified with Christ, I no longer live. And we, when we fast, we are crucifying our life. We're crucifying, we're dying to that flesh. And, um, but Christ lives in us. So our flesh is being destroyed. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith. So um, uh, somebody, I got a text, but anyways, I. Um, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Um, but really 20 is where I want to look at how we die to the flesh and Christ lives in us. And that life that we now live 
in the body, we live by faith. So we're just living by faith. And uh, this is one thing that came to me is a lot of times when we don't live by faith, a lot of us are actually living in the past because faith is our future. Faith and hope are, are our future. But a lot of people, if you hear them talk, they'll talk about the past of all these things that they did and this or that. But we live by faith. We live in hope and we live in the future. Um, this is the only book that has prophecy, you know, the so-called, this is the only holy book, but what other people say is holy. This is the only one that really has prophecy in, in our future by, by what God promises. It, it has um, our future, our, our prophecies in it. So we live by faith in the son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Um, so that's really important to really understand that, that we are crucified, our flesh is crucified, and we live in Christ. He is in us, and we live by faith, and we live by faith. Um, Romans 5, 8, but God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why were we yet sinners? Christ died for us. You know, um, he did it for us. It's completed. It's over with. 1 Corinthians 5, 3, for I delivered unto you the first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. He did it all, and we just have to live in Christ and be crucified, our flesh. So there's the, some of the scriptures I wanted to go over. Um, I don't know if um, you wanted to make have any more comments, any other comments. We're going to end now. Um, and if somebody feels led to pray, they can pray. Uh, okay. I'll go ahead and just pray out. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, you're great and powerful, mighty God. Oh, Father, there is none like you. We worship you. We praise you. We give you all the glory, honor due to you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you. Give you all the glory, honor due to you. Um, we thank you in Jesus' name. Eve, you unmuted yourself. Yeah. Did you you want to pray? Yeah. You want thank to you. pray to close, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Lord, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. We thank you for, Father, before closing, we ask for strength during this fasting. Mm -hmm. Spiritual, physical, emotional, and even mental strength for a lot of us, Lord. Psychological strength, too, because sometimes you can touch on mentals, but we want you to be the source of um, strength, the source of, Father God, the, the fact that we push, we keep pushing. Just be the force that is pushing us to do better, the force that is pushing us to push and go and cross the final, the finishing line. Lord, we give you the glory. And we thank you for this teaching. We thank you for reminding us what you do through fasting and reminding us also that fasting is not only about uh, depriving ourselves from food or anything else. It's about being connected to you. Lord, allow us to be connected yeah. in this season and this time. This month is a month where we need to get closer to you. And as you put us in the threshing floor, remove everything that is shut. Yes, Lord. Only, Father God, what you want to be there, stay in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the next four cheese. Thank, thank you for the you, goodness. Jesus. Thank you for all you're doing and about to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Caroline, yes. can I just throw uh, a, a short prayer? The Lord oh, is showing me that, uh, yeah, some who cannot fast because of unforgiveness. They have tried and it's not working because they have not forgive. So if I can pray one minute for that. Absolutely. Okay. Father God, I thank you for the revelation. Father, you know who you are talking to. Father, I, I thank you because you know the family we are coming from, the brother, the sister, the parent, you know the friend we have, you know also the one that are offended against us all, the one we have offended. Father, we come and we ask for forgiveness, for holding 
resentment for holding unforgiveness. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that during this time where we are fasting, purify our heart. Give us a new heart, Father. Give us a new heart and let uh -huh. us release the captive. Let us release the oppressed, Father. The one that we have judged in our heart and we don't want to let go. Father, let us release them. Mm -hmm. Only you can heal us inside and allow us to step forward. Father, I pray, O oh Lord, that as we are fasting, you open our heart, O oh Lord, and you reconcile us to you. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you for the reconciliation also to the brethren, to the person that has offended us. Thank you for the peace, Father. Let us find peace in you. Thank you for the faithfulness in you. Thank you for grace and mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Any other comments or prayers? Okay. Thank you. I, um, amen to that. Um, and Reverend, I was uh, wondering, what about people that have a hard time forgiving themselves? Uh, fasting can still help because sometimes it's a stronghold because you think perhaps it's your fault that something has happened. So guilt has entered or uh, shame has entered or anything else. Fasting will make you pull down that stronghold from your mind. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. Because the word of God, what he will do, he will cleanse you and he will renew your mind. You can wake up and you don't even know why you was. You have so much hard time forgiving yourself because the word has done the work when you were sleeping. So fasting will allow your spirit to be more alert in order to receive that light and that breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Amen. You understand? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So we see that fasting is, is very important and um, to not take this lightly as we work through this fast through this whole month. Um, and that a three chord strand is not easily broken, uh, you know, giving, praying and fasting according to scriptures um, that was that uh, uh, Jesus spoke about. So I'm going to end here today. If anybody had anything else to say, Sophia, how are you doing? If you showed up, we were just discussing fasting, fasting. So um, I'm doing well. Thank you. How's your fasting go? Are you fasting? Yes, I'm, I'm, I am uh, fasting uh, a meal um, each day uh, this week so far. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah. So um, we're just, we're talking about the benefits of that in fasting, but um, we're ending here now, but I'm glad you showed up. And Yes, um, I apologize. That's fine. That's fine. God bless each and every one of you. Um, and may you continue going strong in your fast and receive the breakthrough and to receive breakthrough in Jesus's name. Amen. God bless.